That's not something that I really ever want to do. That's not something that I really ever want to do. I just, somebody must have just dumped a load. That didn't sound right. <laughs> that did not sound right. Guess what? I have a thrift haul. Do you know, and I'm sure you did, that there are over 100 recognized breeds of terriers? Therefore, and I know that you know, you can tell the difference between a Scottish terrier, the beloved Scotty, and the other 99 plus breeds. So you decide, but guess what? I didn't find just one, I found two. Now these are piggy banks. They're made in Japan and I believe they were probably made after the war. Um, we all know about the huge popularity of the Scotty dog in this country and I suppose around the world in the first or during the first basically half of the last century. Thanks to films and beloved dogs in films and, of course, FDR's Fala. But anyway, you can see he's a ter he's a, some type of a terrier. I'll go ahead and say Scotty. He's a piggy bank made out of ceramic, and he's kind of got some pink, pink tones to him. The sunlight sort of washes it out. Um, he has on the bottom of him, actually... what look like some Japanese characters, which is very unusual for pottery like this or ceramics. Um, it might not look that way to you on the screen, but anyway, I can't, so here and here, and those symbols are also uh, on this little, on this one as well. And when I look very closely in, with my eyes in the regular light, I can see that. But back here, it's also stamped Japan and then something else right there. Now I've gone through, don't look at my fingernails. I helped somebody about an hour ago lug a, a water heater out of a basement. <sighs> I can't wait to go home. But anyway, so look too. They're in fantastic condition without chips or cracks. There is some crazing to the glaze. And these might even be, these might even be just before the war. I've got my books at home and I've really studied those books about the Japan pieces made from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. There's a certain look and then also the way they're marked on the bottom. So I'm not positive, but we'll just go ahead and we certainly know these are gonna sell because everybody loves these puppy dogs. I can't believe I found two. Look at that. Now, what is it that tells you that that's from the 30s and the 40s and not the 1990s? No mark on the bottom. Butterscotch Bakelite. Ah, we love it. Caramel color. What's Normally, people say butterscotch, and there it is. So we're definitely in that 1930s era with that. I was thrilled. Ho, ho, ho. I don't know why I said ho, ho, ho when I lifted up a Halloween decoration that has tape on it. Now, um, you say, oh, for Pete's sake, look how faded it is. Yep. It ain't supposed to look like that. It supposed to look like that. But somebody had it in their window and the sun bleached it. Now, you know what? tell you what this is the real thing empire yeah of course and there are actually YouTube videos if you want if you are so inclined and this one is not so inclined um, you can restore the color to these well sort of it's never gonna look exactly like that but I don't know you gotta like 
heat the water to over 200 degrees and experiment with different types of dye and then put it down in a bathtub or a bucket or something. That's not something that I really ever want to do. But you can do it. And somehow you're able to darken. I've seen the YouTube videos. You can actually, and they look pretty good. Not original, but they do look good. You can darken these polythermal petroleum plastic things. I don't even know if that's what they're made of. So I bought him very cheaply, and I'll sell him cheaply at Monday night's autumn extravaganza i don't have time to put him online so if you like him come get him monday night i don't know what he'll sell for but uh you can experiment you can leave him like that or try to dye him a darker color um it's you know it's we really only care what they look like at night right and so my little trick is i take an orange light bulb when i light up any of these that are faded and you get a nice effect okay <coughs> Look, look, look. Uh, let's open up this bag and see what happens. I don't... That thing... Okay. It's warm again today. Wonderful. Fenton? Yeah? Vaseline? Yep. Yeah, I know. It'll glow under a black light. You know me. I don't care about that. Look! There's another one. We'll put that in our snow and ice sale next January. Uh, I got something else in here for the snow and ice sale for next January too. And also in this little bag, why is it that ever since I started talking about the Georgian pattern, now I can't look sideways without finding it? Gee, I'd love to have more than two. We talked extensively about the Georgian pattern, oh, two or three videos ago. So I see no reason to go blah, blah, blah about those today. Now, um, okay. Pink, pink, this does not stink. Pink, pink, you stink. This is wonderful. I just, somebody must have just dumped a load. That didn't sound right. <laughs> that did not sound right. Someone must have just donated a ton of uh, pink depression glass, is what I meant to say. Center handle pink, what we call tidbit trays today. And look at the pattern on that. Look at it. Look at it. Now you say, well, Scott, how do you know all these patterns? Well, I have been fiddling with depression glass for 40 years. More than that. Because I was younger than 17 when I started fiddling with this kind of stuff. So more than 40 years. You don't have to know all the patterns. You get yourself one of the good guides and you know, look it up when you get home. But when you're in the store... You know, you, you, you feel it, you just know, you know that it's depression because you've spent so much time looking at it. And so I don't remember all the pattern names, um, but, isn't, but this is one I don't find frequently with those embossed flowers on the bottom of it. And then this, yeah, Silvercrest Fenton. So that... And that will reappear next January, and you know it's going to hopefully not be here before we know it. Made uh, sometime after, made sometime in the 50s, but before the 70s on this silver crest piece by Fenton, basket by Fenton. Uh, and now the pink. The pink pink continues with how many plates? One, two, three, four, five. Look at that pattern. But it's not just five. It's ten. Ooh. So, uh, ten matching pink depression glass 
dessert or luncheon plates. They are eight inches in diameter. Now, if you fall, if you fall off of my dashboard, okay, wait a minute. There's more pink, pink. Now they taped these two together. We have the towering inferno of pink depression glass. Uh, so we have a wonderful bowl here, which can be for whatever you want to put in it and a little pedestal here footed with a stem. And this can also be for a cheese ball. or a baked apple. It's a small one. Is that all that's in that box? Yeah. Now I've got one more thing to show you, but I have to shift in my seat. Hold on. I also have this and I'm gonna bake with it and then sell it. Look at that. I have never yet seen that form. This is Hot Oven Harker, the oldest pottery in America. And I'll let you see the label on the bottom. This would be from the 40s. And it has a kind of an autumn feel, I guess. Maybe a little bit, or does it seem like springtime to you? I don't know. Um, but probably, probably designed to go with a breakfast set because of this spout right here. Mixing up your pancake batter and your waffle batter. So if this went to a breakfast set, then there would have been creams and sugars and muffin ears and oh, all the other accoutrements that went at the breakfast table. Could have, could have. I'm not saying that it did, but since we have that spout, it's really for uh, batter, pouring batter. But you know what? I think you could make up a nice batch of ginger snaps in that. Listen. All of this on this front seat. Now, I was helping somebody this morning get a water heater, lug a water heater, rusty old thing, out of a basement. And then I said, before I go home and take a shower, I'm going to stop at two, three thrift stores. And I did. All of this came from three thrift stores. And I spent about $32 on everything that you see here. Phenomenal. You never know. And it's a Saturday. I don't like going thrifting on Saturdays. But every time I make up my mind to go on a Saturday, it's phenomenal. So maybe a lot of the hunter, uh, hunter seekers, maybe a lot of the... Um, look at the bird poop on the top of that car. I have never seen a car with so much bird poop. <gasps> oh, that was nasty. It was it was like a scene from Alfred Hitchcock. What was I saying? Maybe I need to start thrifting on set Sunday? No way. <laughs> no way for many reasons, but anyway, I seem to do well on Saturdays. Now, this isn't all of the video. Why don't we back it up and look at some footage? I didn't film me buying any of this. But I've got little snippets from other stores. So this is a backwards video. We had the front seat thrift haul first, and now you're going to look at me hopping around to different videos, just little bits and pieces uh, of scraps that I have filmed over the last few days. I hope you're having a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Don't forget to come and see me Monday night, Labor Day. That's right, at 8 o'clock right here on this channel for the Autumn Extravaganza live sale. Until then, well, you keep watching and then I'll say wait for the cat at the end. Ha ha ha, look at him. I love it. Now look at his colors and the way his face is done. Hey. He looks old. In fact, he looks like he is manufactured between the two world wars. Uh, I'm going to turn him upside down and it says made in Czechoslovakia. You see that? Now that little 38 on there, who knows? It could be the year. It could be a mold mark. It could be the price. It could be the factory. Um, 
but he is classic 30s and he's in good condition and he's only three dollars i love it so he's in the style of a toby jug um i sold one of these oh i don't know a couple of weeks ago but look at his little face he is just he's looking very pleased with himself it looks like he's um, sitting at the table waiting for his plum pudding or something but he's going in my cart you know value eh, not much it's decorative and it's cute and you know it's my speed from the 30s well here I am what are these those are pigs Ooh. I think those are pigs is that a pig Wait, let me see. yeah that's a pig all right, I'm not feeling the pigs today. Uh, well, going up and down the aisles in this thrift shop, this is the shop I was in the other day where they were clearing out the shelves. Yeah, and throwing the glass away. By the way, that desk that was $19, the Governor Winthrop uh, secretary, gone. It was right there, and it is gone. But that other bookcase, I'm sorry, the, the dresser from the... 30s with the desk in it is still here. Look at the steak plate. And that says, is it a Georges Briard? No, it's an Ireland glass product. Okay. Oops. Now, if you're if you're new to this channel and it sounded like I just threw that down, I didn't. One of the things that happens is here we are in a building with a cement floor and the cell phone makes all of the sounds louder what is that the cell phone makes all oh this is one of those yogurt yogurt things isn't it continental wait a minute i can't get it the volume is increased corning something yeah i don't corning that's yeah uh, here I am trying to complete a sentence and I can't do it. The sound is amplified because I've often, well not often, but every once in a while people say, oh, you, you bang the stuff around, you bang it around. You'll see. I've watched other thrifters and people say the same thing, but really it is true that the noise is amplified because of the inside of the, oh, never mind. Hmm. Uh, well, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> I think shouldn't I? Yeah, I think no. I mean, yeah, I think no. Here's some restaurant wear. Yeah, that is... What? Brassiere? Wait a minute, that can't be what that says. Williams, Sonoma, Japan? Isn't that word, the French word for bra? That can't be right. Well, since I am stuck on the Bristol Bridge, I thought I would take a little video. Oh, here's the traffic is moving. Okay, well, I can still, all right, I won't drive and film. Well, I guess that's Viking. As you know, I am, this is out of my line of expertise, if I have any expertise. I'm gonna buy it, although it's way more than I wanna pay, $11. So maybe I can make 10 bucks off of it, uh, hopefully 15. I like my profit margin to be at least $15 on each item, but it's in really good condition and it's red. So, I guess I'll have to put it in my cart because I don't often find mid-century. And I know how much people like mid-century. So I am always looking for it. Okay, let's put that down in there. Yeah. Well, it has been a while since I've sold any peach luster. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I don't remember ever coming across this particular design, and I don't know if Hawking called it a uh, oh, colonial design or not. I'll look it up when I get it home. But three mixing bowls in uh, peach luster or copper 
usually the kitchenware was called copper tone. So, but wow. Uh, I guess there was a fourth. And I'm assuming the fourth was larger than this one and not smaller than that one. But I'm going to put those three peach luster mixing bowls in my cart. Well, how to make your husband a sultan. Mm. Belly dance with Oogle Turk Bar. Okay. I'll have to consider that. Nah. Turn that thing off. <laughs> you know how much I love these cedar boxes from the 1930s, especially when it's got old brass straps and all the hardware. And look, even the little lock, but it's locked in place. I'll have to see if I can find a key. But you know what? When I lifted up this box, it was extremely heavy. I'm going to pay $6 for it. And wait till you find out what's inside. I'll show you when we get out in the truck. This is excitement. Well, let's find out. Open the lid and take a look. Hmm, 31 of them. Now, from what I discovered, when these were originally published, there were 101. You could collect up to all 101 of them. And they were produced in the early 1920s. And we can see here, this one is entitled Memories of President Lincoln by Walt Whitman. And if we open these little, little guys up, we can see that this is called the Little Leather Library Corporation of New York. And although we really don't have any publishing information on these individually, I went and read about them. Uh, so, yep, sold during the 1920s, and I've got 31 of them. Value, eh, not much on these little guys, but it just was fun to find all of them shoved down inside. Oh, the murders at the room more by Poe. So you've got a, a range of things here, of titles. Some familiar with, some I'm not. I don't know Moo Moo. Uh, a Comedy of Errors, Shakespeare, of course. Uh, the Importance of Being Earnest, Oscar Wilde. And then The Finest Story in the World, R Rudyard Kipling. Uh, I was hoping, didn't Rudyard Kip Kipling write uh, Gunga Din? Who was I talking to the other day about Gunga Din? Gunga Din, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. Anyway, I will not be selling the library with the box. They were not shipped in the box. They didn't come in the box. They just happened to fit in this box. This box is not quite as old as the little volumes. The box I would put in the 1930s and 40s. Even though these little cedar, cedar boxes and pine boxes and things uh, were made for decades, You'll find them from the 20s all the way up into the 1970s, but they're different from each, sort of each era. Okay, that was a lot of fun. I am so excited, I cannot nice. wait to tell you. You realize I'm filming right now, don't you? This, this lady, this lady that I don't even know just walked up to me. No, I will not put you on camera since I, oh, I can. So look, may you, may I, please announce yourselves. I'm Gail. I'm Ginny. And I am so excited. Wait, I don't Yay! think I can I don't think I can be in there with you. Oh okay. no. So I'll turn it around. Okay. Fairy lamps are normally not my thing, but you know what? I'm buying this and I'm gonna pay more for it than I want to. And the reason for that, let me get out of the way because somebody is stalking me. <laughs> the reason I'm gonna pay more for it than I want to is because I will now have four of these. 
Okay, a couple of things. Let's get that out of the way, first of all, because it is broken and it has been repaired. You can see right there. Otherwise, that would have been a very nice, of course, it's overpriced. Um, 1930s, made in Japan, little luster lamp with an old socket. Um, I wouldn't have paid $15 for it, um, even if it weren't broken at the bottom. And these, they're $6 each, they're dresser lamps, and they would date, for, you know, the 40s, 40s, 50s, even early 60s. But I am going to say no. Um, they're a little too prickly for me. I just don't know. Even this is almost like tr tree bark in a sense. Uh, oh, good grief. They might appeal to someone, but they're just not speaking to me. I'm not sure. I'm feeling like some evil sea creature that would sting you if you stepped on it. So, <laughs> probably is, is someone out there is probably in love with them. But, I, I, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, eh. <laughs> I do have some things in the cart. And I didn't film while I was shopping because it's... I just didn't do it. But I'll get these things home, cleaned up, and I will show you what I've got. You know I will. And now I will say thank you for what... <laughs> and now I will say... And now, the pumpkin head and I say thank you for watching. What is it? Thank you for watching. Wait for the cat. And now, the pumpkin head and I say thank you for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.